Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about creating and using Google Forms. Google Forms are a great way to host surveys and questionnaires and you can easily track all of your data within Google Drive. So let's take a look. To use Google Forms you need to have a Google account and then you can go to forms.google.com which will take you to this page that we're at right here. Notice that from this page we can actually create new forms just by starting with either a blank form or using one of the templates. You can see contact information, RSVP, and so forth. At the same time, I think it's important to note that Google Forms are connected to Google Drive. So if you're in Google Drive, you could actually create a new Google Form by going over to the New dropdown, going to More, and then going to Google Forms. Notice that you can create a blank form right from here. So when we click that, a new tab opens up and we have started creating a new form. So what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll take a look at some of our different options that we have when we create a form. Then we'll customize some of our settings here in Google Forms and then we'll go ahead and take a look at how we can share our form and review the data that comes back from the answers that we've received. So to start creating our form we can just give it a title up here at the top. So let's go ahead and create a questionnaire asking people what type of tutorials that they'd like to see in the future. Then we can go ahead and we can add our first question. You'll see that Google already creates an untitled question for us to start with. So we can go ahead and click down here to edit it. Where it says untitled question, that's actually where we can put the question itself. If I delete that out, you'll notice it now says question. So we can start with, what's your email address? Now over here to the right, we need to choose what type of question we'd like this to be. So by default, it's short answer, but you can see that we have a number of different options. Some of them are self-explanatory. Paragraph is just going to allow more characters than your short answer. Multiple choice is a multiple choice question. Checkboxes allow the user to submit multiple answers. A dropdown would require the user to only select one answer from a dropdown list. File upload allows the user to upload a file. So this is great for if you're accepting, say, essays. You could have the users or students upload their essays with this file upload option. Then we have some of the more advanced questions over here. We can do a linear scale, so that might be, you know, how would you rate your experience on a scale from 0 to 10, and then we can uh, create an actual scale. Multiple choice grid questions are good uh, sometimes when you're doing a survey on how somebody's experience was. Let's take a look at this one because I think it's a little bit more difficult to grasp. So if we create a multiple choice grid, we're going to ask the user to give one response per row. Maybe each row would be a different aspect of the activity that they went through, and in the columns we're going to have the answers. Let's take a look. So first of all, let's change our question, and let's make our question, how interested are you in the following topics? So then, in the different rows, we're going to have the different topics. So we can say, iOS, Android, macOS, and Windows. So now in the columns, we can put our different levels of interest. So we can say, not at all, somewhat, or very. So now for each of the rows, they're going to answer, how interested are they in iOS? Not at all, somewhat, very. Android, not at all, somewhat, very, and so forth. So you can see uh, that's an example of when you would want to choose a grid question. Let's go ahead and save that one so that we can see it later on. Uh, so to save that one, I'm just going to create a new question, and then we'll take a look at the dropdown again. To create a new question here in Google Forms, we're just going to click on the plus icon to the right side of our screen, and you'll notice that a new question was added below. And now our previous question, we can kind of see uh, how that matrix grid worked out, and I think it makes a little bit more sense now seeing in action. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here and click back on the drop down for our second question. The checkbox grid works just like the multiple choice grid except the users can select multiple answers in each row. So they would be able to select not at all and somewhat. Obviously your question would need to be uh, a little bit different than this, but I'm sure that you can come up with some scenarios where you would use the checkbox grid. Then down here at the bottom, we can also add a date and a time. And now you'll notice that these might be out of order. Maybe we want the date and time at the top of the form. So we can just grab these dots right here and we can uh, pull it up so that it's now underneath the title but before the first question. And then we can do the same with time. Let's go ahead and pull the time up as well. So now the first things that will be recorded when the user goes to fill out the form are the date and the time. Notice that for all the questions, we have this option to require it. So if we want the date and time 
to always be recorded, we need to flip that on. So let's go up here to date as well and turn that on. Let's go down here to our uh, first and only question and let's go ahead and require a response in each row for this question as well. Down here at the bottom, we could duplicate this question. So that's useful if you're going to be using the same format for another question. You can just go in and change your answers and change the text. Also, you can see you could delete the question. And then over here to the right, we have three little dots and we could click on to edit this question a little bit more. We could click to show the description. So then we could add a description to the question. We could make it so that here in the multiple choice grid question that they're only allowed to use uh, each column answer once. So if they answer not at all for iOS, they can't answer not at all again. And then we could also use this handy shuffle row order. So you, this will come up for any type of question that we do that's like a multiple choice or check boxes. You can shuffle the order of your answers. Uh, so if you, if you put them in in a particular order, then, then that doesn't come out on the actual form itself. Let's move up here and take a look at some of these other options we have over here to the right. You notice that um, we can add another title and description at any time. So if I click on that title and description, you'll notice that it creates a blank part of my form here. And I'm just going to drag this up uh, above my first question. And I'm just going to say survey begins here because the date and time are recorded automatically. Uh, so they're really going to start answering questions here. But there's something else I'm going to show you uh, why I'm doing this here in a minute. But let's go back over here to the right. Notice that we can also add images to our form. So uh, we could add any type of image that we'd like. We could upload a, a, a funny picture of something or we could upload a question that we have that was on a piece of paper. We can also add videos. So you can add videos from YouTube. If you have maybe a, a video question, you could upload your, your video question to YouTube and then you could embed it right here in your form. So that's a pretty cool uh, way to be creative here in Google Forms. And then down here at the bottom, we can add a section. And this is what I was leaving out a minute ago when I created this, this second title section. So if I click add a section, you'll notice that our page, our form now breaks, um, which allows, which makes it so that the user will see one part of the survey first, and they won't be able to look ahead at the second section until they complete the first section. And we can always move things around here a little bit. So I have this survey begins here. Well, it doesn't really, right? I need to actually bring that down into section two because section one is just getting the date and time, and then we'll continue on to the next section. We could actually, uh, I didn't realize, I forgot that sections have their own title. So I could put this survey begins here in the section title, and then I could go here to this second title that I created, and I could delete that out. Okay, so now we have two pages of our form. This first one that again collects the date and time, and then the second one, which is our first question. Let's just go ahead and quickly create a second question that's a short answer, just so we can see how it looks when we look at the form later on. So we'll ask our original question again that we never really answer here and we'll say what's your email address. Now obviously this isn't going to be a multiple answer question. Now it is going to be a short answer question. However, you'll notice that down over here we have this suggestion to enable email collection setting. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now you'll notice that down here at the bottom left it says this form will collect email addresses. So now if we scroll up a little bit here, you'll notice that at the top it puts this email address area in. Um, you can't really change where that goes because what happens is is when you require the form to collect the email address it wants to do that the very first thing so it's always going to go up at the top but we could obviously go down in here into section two and we could add another question you know, obviously it gets added in section one but of course we can drag that down right so we drag that into section two and we could say what's your favorite device and we could make this multiple choice, we could say smartphone, we'll keep it general. Tablet or computer. And we'll make it a required question. So now we have two questions on our survey. Notice that even though we've given our survey a name for when people go to fill it out, we don't have a name for this form when we manage it here in Google Drive. So it's probably a good idea to go up here to where it says untitled and give it a name. So we'll just copy this future tutorial survey title and go up here and there we pasted it in. So now the form has a name. But let's take a look at a couple of other things up here at the top right. The first option is to customize the theme. And I don't want to go into too much detail here, but you can essentially change how your survey looks. So you could choose a different color, you could actually choose an image or upload an image. Uh, so you can get as creative as you want here. You'll notice that the theme of your survey changes. 
If at any time you want to see what your survey is going to look like, for those who fill it out, you can click on the preview button up here at the top right. You'll notice it opens up in a new tab, and now we'll start to see what our survey looks like. So you can see that the users enter their email address, they enter a date, a time, and then they can move on to the next page of the form. Let's go ahead and just close this out and go back to the editing area. The one last thing that I want to show you before we talk about sharing this form and looking at the answers is up here in the gear icon. It's the settings, and there are a lot of important settings here in Google Forms. You'll notice that, first of all, we told Google earlier that we wanted to collect email addresses, so that's selected. You can decide whether or not you want your respondents to receive a copy of their answers. You can limit each respondent to only answering once, so that's based on their Google account. You can allow respondents to edit after submitting them. And then you can also allow the respondents to see the answers, the actual outcomes of the surveys and the text responses. Then you have a couple other tabs up here as well. You can click on presentation. A nice little feature I like here is you can always shuffle the question order. So that's good if you're giving a real serious test or something and you might have students sitting next to each other, you can shuffle them uh, so each one has a different order of questions. And then over here we have the quizzes section. And this just makes it so that we can make quizzes here in Google Forms and it will automatically grade them for us. So we can turn this on, we can determine when we want the quiz to be graded, either immediately or after we have already reviewed it. And then we can decide what the respondent to the quiz can actually see. Can they see the questions that they missed? Can they see the correct answers? And can they see their score? Uh, so there's some really important settings in here. So when you're ready, you can just click Save. And I'm just going to close out this theme options area for now, because you'll notice that now that we've created our form, we need to talk about how we can get it to our end users. So we can do that by going up here to send. You'll notice that we have a number of different options. We could send the form uh, via an email. So we could just start entering email addresses down here. So we could say webmaster at Then you can use a comma and you could add as many as you want. You can choose the subject of the email, a message to go along with the email, and you can decide whether you want the actual form itself included in the email. You can also add collaborators from this screen. So this is how you can invite people to edit the same form as you. So they'll be able to change the questions and the responses, look at the statistics and so forth. We could also share this form via link. So we can just copy this link. We could even shorten it by hitting the checkbox right here. And we could send that to anybody or put it on a website. We could also embed the form by clicking on this last option. So you could go into your website editor and you could embed this iframe where you'd like the quiz to appear on your website. So that's a nice option if you'd like to give the quiz online. If you're just going to have them fill it out on the computer that you're using, you can just go over here, grab the link, copy it, open it into a new tab, and open up the form and then you can have them fill it out like that. So now let's talk about reviewing answers. So first of all, let's go through and let's just fill this out real quick. Just say webmaster at antonalex.com. We'll choose the date. very interested in all the topics and submit. Okay, so now we've submitted a response. So we can go back in here to the survey itself and you'll notice that we have this responses tab up here at the top and it has the number one next to it, meaning that there's been one response. So we can click on that and now we get to see a summary. I'm just going to close this pop-up by Google which tells us that we can see the actual responses to each question and not just the total uh, responses as a whole. But let's just close that out. You'll notice that we now have our one response but because this wasn't a quiz in terms of uh, yes or no questions. We're not seeing a grade that the actual user got, but we can click on question to see what they actually answered to the different questions. Then we can click on the arrow down here at the bottom right to look at the next question. That was the time, then their favorite device. So we can go through each question here. And then if you click on the individual tab up here at the top, uh, you can see the whole survey for each individual person that filled it out. You'll notice that we only have one right here but we could click on the arrows if we had other ones to view the other surveys and their answers. Now, this is kind of bulky, and that's because there's a better way to view your answers that you get on your surveys using Google Forms, and that is to open it up in Google Drive and Google Sheets. So you'll notice up here at the top right, we have this option to create a spreadsheet. So when we click on that, we say we're going to create a new spreadsheet. We can call it whatever we'd like, but it has a default name in there, which is the same title of the form itself and then we can click on Create. You notice that it says Spreadsheet Linked, and we can click Open. In a new tab, we now have a Google Sheet that opens up, and it has our first response with a timestamp, the email address, the date and time that they actually put in. Now I told you that it was going to collect the date and time 
automatically. So there you have it. I wasn't lying. And then we have uh, their answers over here as well. So favorite device was smartphone. How interested are you in iOS? And you notice it says it has each one of our possible responses for the matrix question that we did. Uh, so that is how we can view our answers here in Google Drive. And of course, you can uh, sort and do all sorts of things to interpret the data and turn it into information instead of just data by using Google Sheets. But that is, of course, an, a whole other tutorial. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, again, you can create Google Forms right from within Google Drive. Uh, when you do create a Google Form, it will show up in Google Drive. So you can see here we are in Google Drive. Here's the form that we just created. We can double click to open it up, edit it. We can click on responses to see the answers. And then, of course, we also have access to this Google Sheet with all of the answers. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you wanna see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.